Hello everyone, welcome to Aardvarkas. This is a section where we talk to people in the games industry uh, about their kind of career, their background uh, and any advice they'd give to future and current developers. Uh, with me today is Rory Maguire. He is the Chief Creative Officer at Blackbird Interactive. Hello Rory, thank you for joining me today. Hey Michael, thank you for having me. Not a problem, thank you for joining like I said. So uh, yeah, uh, tell us a bit about being a Chief Creative Officer uh, and what a typical day involves for you. Yeah, I think uh, every day is a little bit different, um, but as chief creative officer, it means that I'm pretty heavily involved with the uh, creative of all of our existing projects, you know, helping those projects, enabling those creators um, that that might range from helping them with a creative problem or a design problem. It might be something where they they need help with the studio, like getting resources for something, um, you know, asking for additional headcount or, or an initiative that they need help with. Um, but it also might mean uh, helping them in conversation with their publisher or helping them in con conversations with their licensor if they're a licensed game you know etc so that's the the kind of uh the projects we have going and then it's also part of the role and a substantial part of the role is future projects so it's uh building pitches and ideas for games that we want to develop building programs and architecture like the skunk program to um, kind of create seeds that will lead to those projects one day and then also collaborating with partners and and uh, meeting with potential um, publishers and and uh, future creative partners as well we already just talked about the the skunk uh, program uh, we talked a lot about that in the full podcast with blackbird so if you do want to know more about that please do go and give that a listen uh, but back to you rory sorry how long have you been at blackbird then doing this it all sounds fantastic uh, and sort of what was your career background how did you get into it what made you join blackbird all that kind of stuff awesome yeah i've been at blackbird uh eight years i'm coming up on eight years uh next week uh february 14th happy valentine's day that will be uh that will be my eight year anniversary um and i came to blackbird just i absolutely love the homeworld series and at the time it was a startup that ha had not made a game but they were making a homeworld game with gearbox and uh actually had a friend connect me with um the ceo rob and the executive producer at the time jd and i didn't know anybody at the studio i just loved homeworld and i wanted to work with them um so yeah that was that was my i start there eight years ago prior to that i worked at uh, sony online i was there uh contributed lightly to a whole bunch of their mmos while i was there and then prior to that i was at high moon studios which um at the time we were building we were building original ip that studio is still still going they're they're working on call of duty they worked on destiny 2 for a while um but our claim to fame back then was we were the first game studio to use agile and scrum and this was looking at this yesterday because i was chatting with somebody about it. it was 16 years ago i wrote an article about uh, scrum and how it could be useful for game designers um so that was a, <laughs> was a long time ago because uh, scrum wow. is now just industry standard <laughs> yeah it's it's incredible you should say that because obviously like i said earlier i do the, the job person almost every single one in this kind of department is yeah needs agile and scrum uh experience and stuff like that so that's incredible um so Going even further back then, Rory, what sort of sparked an interest for you in the in the games industry? Um, I think like most, I, I love games from a young age, but there was a particular point where I was probably 16 and uh, I downloaded, you know, I was playing a bunch of games at the time. It was Quake and it was kind of that second generation of first person shooters. And I ended up downloading an editor just to kind of play around with it. And I remember I downloaded it in the morning and at like five in the morning, I stopped playing with it. So it was like 18 hours of being an editor, like literally watching my first tutorial and then like building a map in one session. And I just disappeared into it. It felt like I was a wizard casting a spell, like I was just creating something. And I had like this incredible power to create something from nothing. And, and it was, yeah, I was just absolutely connected with it. It'd be the equivalent of like, you know, a kid sitting down to like play with a keyboard and sitting there for 18 hours and being like, holy crap. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Yeah, that was I, I went from that to basically just building a ton of ton of maps and a ton of um, content for mods and and uh, that's ultimately what led me to to join the industry was focusing a lot on on mods and and building a portfolio there that, and I think that that's still a good way to get into design um, I think most people if you ask them from my generation like oh you know how did you get into design can I do the same most people would say no because it's like oh I knew somebody or whatever or I 
fell into the job from such and such or I, I one of the first guys i worked with had a phd in marine biology and it's like but that, wow. those types of backgrounds don't really end up in games now um mm -hmm. but uh the method that i used which was to build mods and just build a portfolio it's still very viable 20 years later like i actually yeah. recommend to folks if they ask like go to a school if you can but if you can't go to a school like there's tons of great editors online and you can build a really formidable portfolio without somebody teaching you necessarily but i do recommend people go to school if they can yeah what was your uh, your first role in the industry? Yeah, I was uh, I was an assistant designer at what would become High Moon. At the time, we were that studio went through many mergers and acquisitions. Um, they are now owned, or they are now tentatively owned by Microsoft because Microsoft has just acquired Activision, who acquired Sierra, who acquired High Moon from Sammy, and that was the original. Uh, Sammy Sega was the original owner. Um, so it was a studio called Sammy Studios. Um, they were working on this original IP called uh, Dark Watch, a first-person shooter. And uh, yeah, I got a job as like an assistant level designer. So I was just making levels and um, the very first levels I made are absolutely terrible. Um, but uh, <laughs> eventually they they shaped me into a pretty good level designer. And I focused on that through my first couple of games until I uh, started later on focusing on uh, game design as a whole, game mechanics, systems, you know, the creative direction the whole shebang do you ever look back on uh, the first levels that you made and see how far you've come and compare or maybe even be a bit nostalgic over i've still got some of the some of the designs and some of the white boxes from my first levels um i've still got them made some real rookie mistakes in those early days my very first level i remember it was like 10 kilometers by 10 kilometers this massive island with like all kinds of stuff and it's like that was like rookie mistake number one is like make something really small and tight and great and start there mm -hmm. before you make big ridiculous things yeah. um but yeah i i do occasionally look back at that stuff and it's come a long way <laughs> that's good that's always good is there any other advice obviously you said you know rule number one don't make a massive island if, and <laughs> <laughs> but is there any other uh, advice that you'd give to someone starting out either in level design or design as a whole or even just the industry um, I think I think I do think level design is a great way to come up in the industry. Still, um, I recommend it to people whenever they ask, and when students ask about it, I, I absolutely recommend um, level design. And level design is a great way to. Um, it's a little bit of game design, a little bit of systems design. You're deploying the systems and kind of creating, you know, it's like a, a music reference is a level designer is not the person that creates the instrument. That's the game designer. And they aren't necessarily someone who writes the song. That's like the creative director or the, the narrative uh, director. But they are the person that plays the song and they are the person that provides the experience. So it's like the player can only experience your game through content, can only experience your game through levels. So the level designer is kind of the the maestro of it all. You know, you're mm. like the the conductor for the player's experience. You're the one who gives them high highs and low lows and how they experience the game. And it's a really great way to come into game design uh, it, because you can experience that connection to the player in the most fundamental way before you dive into, you know, systems design or game mechanics or, or any yeah. of those things. Um, so it's a great great way to get started and level design is still probably one of the most hired design positions like uh there's a lot of level design opportunities especially in triple a I, I mean that's that's the advice you'd give someone starting now uh sort of being a maybe a little bit nostalgic maybe a bit self-critical what is something that you wish you knew uh when you when you started off looking back oh man so many things um i think one thing that i've learned now is that i was a really big gamer i still am i still play like multiple hours a day of games um uh, in fact i played a little bit this morning before i hopped on on this podcast um but uh i think one thing that i i have learned now as a creative is that the best inspiration for games comes from places that are not games and i think a lot of game designers actually focus on playing all the latest first person shooters to then make a first person shooter and I think some of the freshest experiences in FPSs in the last 10 years have actually come from people finding inspiration in places that weren't games. So, for example, um, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds or uh, DayZ is actually an extremely great example where DayZ was inspired because the creator was uh, on a bivouac uh, in the military and had to survive on this bivouac. It was like a... You know, they were given a limited amount of food and they could ambush other soldiers and take their food, 
but uh, they had to survive in the wild for four days. And he was like, this would be an amazing video game. And that's what he made. That's what DayZ is, right? Like, it's that's yeah. the core fundamentals of DayZ. It's not Quake. It's not any of the games that came before it. It's surviving in the wild. Um, and I think uh, I think that would be the advice I give to myself is, yeah, play lots of games. And I would tell anybody, play lots of games. But also consume other experiences, consume art, consume um, music, consume uh, like all of that stuff is all food for game design. Oh, definitely. I 100 percent agree. I think that's very valuable advice for one. But I like the the idea and I, I, I believe in it myself that to create authentic art, you have to consume a variety, including real life experience. You have to consume all of that to, to get something new, innovative and authentic, I'd say. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I mean, if you want to create, you know, the fourth rev of a first person shooter uh, iteration, you can. But the thing that's really going to move somebody and change somebody is is something that's inspired through real life experience. Um, so that's obviously very profound in terms of art and, you know, life in general. But if we sort of like hone it in onto the games industry, obviously you've been in it for nearly 20 years now. Um, producing for console, PC and mobile. Uh, do you have any sort of reflections so far or maybe some comments on the current state of the industry uh, from your experience? I think the industry is in the best place it's ever been. I mean, I think, um, you know, when I started in games, it was mostly console and um, PC. Uh, PC was at the time had kind of gone through a contraction where it was the second fiddle to console for a little bit. But PC roared back uh, not long after that. Steam really drove that. Steam kind of democratized um, the ability for anybody to get a game into the wild. Um, and we saw some really fresh amazing voices emerge because of that it, you know previously up until about 2010 the games that were coming out were there were executives that made the decisions about what games came out it's very similar to film and what steam and to a lesser extent the app store did or actually you know to a different audience the app store did was uh, it democratized that and it let anybody create a vision so there were games about everything there are games about walking in the woods there are games about um going through a transition uh, to to be uh, from man to woman there was uh games about like all these unique experiences being a border guard like games that would not literally have not even crossed the desks of the executives that would have mm. made those decisions and i think that creative experience uh, or those creative experiences have really reinvigorated the industry. So even now in AAA and these really big games, you're seeing those voices start to influence them. So I think creatively, the industry is just in this really incredible spot right now. And uh, business-wise, never been better. You know, growth throughout the last 10 years has been amazing. The last three years in particular, like we're all inside, we're all playing video games. It's Netflix or video games. That's that's what <laughs> yeah. we've done for the last two years. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I think, uh, again, just going back to, to what we said before about life influencing art and games, like all these kind of experiences you, you touched, touched upon just there um, all come from that. So just just as a closing point, I think that really, you know, wraps it all up. Uh, but I will have to close it there, Rory. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, it's, it's really been great chatting with you, Michael. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, well, yeah, so to anyone listening, um, if you are interested in working with people like Rory at Blackbird Interactive, do check out our uh, the roles that we've got available with them on our website. Uh, but until next time, I've been your host, Michael Rubber, with, of course, Rory from Blackbird. Uh, enjoy. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.